It's hard to believe that we are approaching the six month mark since COVID-19 hit Missouri. These past six months have been a whirlwind to say the least. We started off this year excited for the future and the direction of Missouri. Up until this point in my administration, we have been very fortunate to have a booming economy with record low unemployment and high wage growth. Incomes have gone up and taxes have gone down. We have, at many times, had more jobs available than we have had people to fill them. Because of this, we have been able to focus on skilling up our workforce and making necessary investments in infrastructure. During these times, we have also been able to put forward responsible and conservative budgets to the General Assembly. Last year, we were able to leave $100 million on the bottom line in order to respond to any unexpected revenue declines. With what we have been through this year, we are so glad we did. We also propose to do the same for next year, ensuring another year of responsible state budgeting and savings. As I laid out in my State of the State address in January, we had full intentions of continuing our focus on workforce development and infrastructure, where we're gaining national attention for our positive momentum. We were also committed to investing in public safety, building stronger communities, and improving state government. Needless to say, when COVID-19 hit Missouri in March, everything changed. At that time, no one knew what to expect. There was a lot of uncertainty, worry, and concern. Concerns that our hospitals would be overwhelmed and we wouldn't have enough ICU beds and ventilators. Concerns over PPE shortages. Concerns that testing wouldn't be widely available and many, many other challenges. But here we are today, close to six months since our first case in Missouri and I am so proud of our citizens, Missouri companies, chambers, and communities across this state for doing their part. Thanks to all of you, we have overcome all of these obstacles and more than met the four pillars of the Show Me Strong Recovery Plan. Pillar one was testing. We went from testing only 4,000 people per week to approximately 90,000 tests per week. Pillar two was PPE. We continue to receive and distribute PPE across the state, and we received national recognition on the Google PPE marketplace. We currently have over 100 hospitals, 1,148 sellers, and nearly 2,000 healthcare providers and Missouri businesses registered in the marketplace. Pillar three was hospital capacity. Our hospitals were not overwhelmed and we converted a hotel into a hospital in just 11 days, thanks to the Missouri National Guard and the Army Corps of Engineers. Pillar four was data. We went from having no state specific data to an entire dashboard of Missouri data from across the state. It is truly incredible to think about how far Missouri has come in such a short amount of time. We have learned and accomplished so much since March. And knowing what we know now, we are much better prepared to deal with COVID-19 going forward. We are confident that Missouri is on the road to recovery and that we will come back stronger than ever before. In June, Accenture Federal Services announced plans to open an advanced technology center in St. Louis, which is expected to bring 1,400 new technology jobs. Lincoln County broke ground on a new workforce development training campus that will create nearly 100 new jobs and $2.8 million in private investment. Tooling Tech Group the second largest tooling provider in the United States announced a $4.5 million investment to expand its Washington, Missouri operations. Tyler Pipe Company 
announced a $4.9 million investment and 75 new jobs in Marshfield. Armstrong World Industries and AGCI recently announced a $8 million investment and nearly 130 new jobs also in Marshfield. And Chewy Incorporated announced plans to open a new 800,000 square foot e-commerce fulfillment center in Belton, which will bring in over 1,200 new jobs to our state. These are just a few examples showing that even in the midst of COVID-19, Missouri remains a top location for businesses, investment, and expansion. Just a couple of weeks ago, we received even more good news on the economic recovery front. Missouri's unemployment rate dropped again, from 7.8 in June to 6.9% in July, with employment increasing by over 52,000 jobs. This is more than three full percentage points lower than the national rate of 10.2% and puts Missouri in the top 10 states with the lowest unemployment rate. Already, we have recovered nearly half of the jobs lost to COVID-19. Missouri's economy is recovering. We are on the right track, and we will continue to do everything we can to rebuild our economy and help Missouri families, businesses, and communities recover from this crisis. It goes without saying that legislative session looked very different this year. However, several pieces of legislation still passed that are important to Missourians' economy and business community. One of them is Senate Bill 591, the Tort Reform Bill, which raises a standard for punitive damages, protecting Missouri businesses and equipping them with the tools to succeed has always been a priority of my administration. By raising the standard for punitive damages, this bill will stop the unfair and unreasonable litigation our businesses face. This bill shows that Missouri is open for business and strikes a fair balance between protecting Missouri employers and employees from senseless claims while still ensuring the ability for those harmed to seek relief in court. Another major bill was House Bill 2046, expanding license reciprocity in the state of Missouri. This legislation will eliminate governmental barriers to employment and allow citizens to become licensed faster when moving or needing to find work here in Missouri. Reciprocity as workforce development sets Missouri ahead of the pack. House Bill 2046 is the most comprehensive reciprocity legislation across all 50 states, including provisions for professional licensing, apprenticeships, and the Fresh Start reentry program. This not only helps fill critical jobs in our economy, but also highlights Missouri as an ideal state to live and work. I also signed House Bill 1511 and 1452, which allows licensed reciprocity for military spouses relocating to Missouri with their active duty partners. Our hope is that this will help ease the burden of relocating and improving the quality of life for military families living and working in our state. In addition to these bills, I signed House Bill 1768, extending the Missouri Broadband Grant Program through 2027. Since I became governor, expanding broadband services, especially for Missouri's rural communities, has been a focus of my administration. The digital divide in rural Missouri limits growth in many sectors of our economy, including education, workforce development, healthcare, business retention, and attraction, just to name a few. Since I have been governor, we have directed tens of millions of dollars to support broadband expansion across Missouri. And now, 
with the challenges posed by COVID-19, access to high-speed broadband is more important than ever to our infrastructure and our economy. Extending the broadband grant program builds on our efforts to bridge the digital gap and bring the best possible broadband services to all Missourians. Workforce development and infrastructure have and will always be a top focus of my administration. But we cannot continue to move Missouri forward in these areas until we address the very real issue of violent crime in Missouri. As you all know, I called a special session in July to address violent crime. Specifically, this session focused on six provisions relating to violent crime. Endangering the welfare of a child, witness protection fund, witness statement admissibility, juvenile certification, unlawful transfer of weapons, and police and public safety employee residency requirements for St. Louis. We truly believe that these are tools that could be used in many of the situations we're seeing today. And we are committing to doing everything we can to get these done. There is no doubt that it has been a challenging year so far. But just as Missourians always do, we will continue to push through these challenges and move our state forward by working hard. We will continue to fight and respond to COVID-19. We will continue to rebuild our economy, and we will continue to strengthen our workforce and improve our infrastructure. We have to be able to move forward. While still protecting public health and by working together, we can and we will do both. We are already making progress, and I strongly believe that Missouri will bounce back quickly and stronger than ever before. Thank you for having me here today. God bless you. God bless the great state of Missouri and God bless the United States of America.